presented by Church Tech U, it's the Pro Presenter Show. On today's show, how to add an audio source for live streaming or recording in Pro Presenter 7.2. Hi, my name is Paul Allen Clifford, and welcome to the Pro Presenter Show. This is the show where I help you learn all about Pro Presenter. So, with the addition of Pro Presenter 7.2, you now can add multiple audio sources from multiple different places to send to multiple destinations. But that can get really complicated really fast. And I was thinking, I bet a lot of people just want to add one and make sure that it goes out to the live stream using the ProPresenter built-in live stream uh, utility. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So let's head over to my computer and take a look. So here we are in uh, Pro 7.2 and that's very important if you've got Pro 7.1 this won't work. So you do need Pro 7.2. So first thing we're going to do is, uh, well I'm going to hide my face, that's a little too much Paul right there. Uh, so let me do that. Okay, now Let's uh, go into live up here above the preview. And we're going to start with um, capture settings. Actually, let me back up just a second because first we need to add the audio source before we tell it where to go, etc. So what we're going to do is go into ProPresenter Preferences. And we're going to start with audio. Now we can add as many channels inside of ProPresenter as we need to reroute things, but in this case you really only need two. So that's where we're going to start. If you need to send different audio to different places at different times, or you're uh, concerned about having an audio loop because you're playing live videos from ProPresenter while also sending that, uh, getting audio in, that's something totally different. This is a very basic introduction. So we're going to start with channel count here. And I'm going to set that to two. That's very important. Um, that we need at least the two. Now next I'm going to go into input. So from input, first you would add a video source. In this case, you're looking at me through the T3i. Now I have a couple of choices. If I'm only going to use one live video source and only one live video source like this one for example what I could do is I could add the audio in right here so I could just go right here and in this case I would add an iMic USB that's my uh, USB audio system I've used this thing for years and it just hasn't failed me yet so I could add that here um, and then reroute it once I get to the live streaming uh, piece of the puzzle, live streaming or recording. But instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add it down here. And you'll see that I've done just that. We don't see the levels bouncing because I didn't want to affect what I was doing with this system. So what I uh, when I had this all plugged in, only this one channel was getting audio. So I'm going to show you how to deal with that as well. Notice I've got 13 milliseconds of delay. The reason is that the video from this camera is about 8 frames off of what um, it's recording from an audio perspective. It's delayed just a little bit. So I did the math and realized that about 13 milliseconds was going to work in my particular situation. So I've got my source selected. Um, it is a two-channel source, so we could think of this as left and right, but in this case um, I only have the two channels. But other cases like this DeckLink Duo, you'll notice that I've got a lot more sources, so that's why they didn't do left and right. Um, the DeckLink Duo is SDI and it can support up to 16 channels. So, 
1 and 2, there's only audio going to be coming in on channel 1, so that's there. Now I've got two ProPresenter channels of audio that I added up here, remember, and then I have two from the iMic. I happen to know that only one of these is going to be live, and so in order to make it so that uh, whoever's watching the recording from me, so they hear it on both channels in case they have an only one earbud in and it's the wrong one, or in case um, they have a, a problem with their computer or something like that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate the one channel from the iMic, which is this one, channel one. I'm going to duplicate that onto ProPresenter channels one and two. So I just do that like that. Uh, auto right here does it it automatically sends channel 1 from the iMic to channel 1 in ProPresenter, channel 2 from the iMic to channel 2. I don't want to do that. I want to do it like this. Um, so that's the reason that I did that right there. I have the ability to turn up that one channel, turn it down, whatever I want to do. Or if I had something coming from both of these, I could turn both of them up or down using this right here. Now, right here where it says mode, um, off disables the audio altogether. Don't want to do that. I want that audio. On turns it on all the time. If you're only playing audio that you capture into ProPresenter uh, from this audio source, that's a perfectly fine way to do it. But I chose auto off. And the reason I chose auto off is what I'm basically saying is don't take audio into um, ProPresenter when a foreground video with audio is being played. So that's why I chose that. Auto on, I could say only, um, well, let me show you this. So in this case, it only turns the audio on when selected video sources are chosen. So I've got five video sources in here just because I like to push things to the limit. You probably won't have that many. So I'd say in general probably you're going to want auto off or just on, depending on if you're going to play videos with foreground videos with sound or not. So if you're not sure, I'd err on the side of auto off. Okay, now that is all set up. Um, channels one and two inside ProPresenter are getting the audio from channel one, which, as I say, you don't see it hooked in because I had to reroute some stuff, but that's the only one that actually gets audio. So that's why I did it like that. So we're done here. Now we can go into live. We're Almost done. So first I'm going to go to Capture Settings. And I'm going to drag that over because you're looking at a different uh, screen than I normally use. Um, so this is RTMP. This is the setting that I'd use if I was going to live stream or live stream and record. Either way, if I wanted to also record, I could click Save Local Copy down here. And I've got a totally different training on uh just doing the live video, but this is new down here in ProPresenter 7.2, and that is routing. So now I select this, and what I'm saying is, okay, remember those two ProPresenter channels that I added? Remember that they were channel 1 and channel 2? Well, the output to the recording and or the, um, the live stream which channels of those do I want to use? In this case, since I've only got two channels, I'm just going to go with auto. And I'm going to have ProPresenter. Notice this is uh, abbreviated Pro. They didn't write out all of ProPresenter, so that's their uh, abbreviation. Pro Channel 1 is left, and Pro Channel 2 is right. That's perfectly good. Once I put in the address from Facebook or YouTube or Resi or churchstreaming.tv or Vimeo or whoever, um, and the key here, I could just click Start Capture and I'd be good to go. 
if instead of uh, live streaming I just wanted to record, then I could switch to disk here, uh, decide all my settings here, and uh, routing is the same way. So that's how you do that. That's about the simplest way you could do it. But I hope that you can start to think that it's like you've got your own uh, soundboard inside of ProPresenter. And so you take however many channels from the audio source that's going into ProPresenter. You route those to whatever channels you want to in ProPresenter. And then you send those channels out, in this case, to the live output uh, or the recording from ProPresenter. So it's actually a three-step process, and I hope that makes it a little clearer. In a future video, I'll talk a little bit about some of the other places you can send audio and um, some of the other sources you can get audio from. So... Um, I hope that makes it a little more clear because that's about as basic as it comes in ProPresenter 7.2. If you like this content, I would bet you'd love my ProPresenter Quick Start course. So if you're interested in that, go to tdm.fyi slash pro7quick. Then just give me your email address and name so that I can... Uh, create a login for you and uh, you can take advantage of that course to get up and running with some of the just bare basics of ProPresenter. Until next time, this is Paul Allen Clifford from TrinityDigitalMedia.com and ChurchTechU.com reminding you to go out and change eternity. <laughs>